All right, so in math, how do we take the square root of a negative number? Well, that's the topic for this particular video, and we have a question here. It is the square root of negative 121. Is the answer 11 or is it negative 11? So put away your calculator because if you truly understand how to find the square root of a negative number, this will be a very easy question to answer. And go ahead and put your uh, solution into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we're going to walk through exactly what's going on here. The answer may surprise some of you. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so another look at this problem. It's pretty straightforward. We're trying to determine the square root of negative 121. So is the answer 11 or is it negative 11? Well, if you answer negative 11, unfortunately, that's wrong. So some of you now might be uh, really confused or be like, wait, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, uh, is the answer 11? Well, no, that's not the answer either. So now you might be kind of upset with me. We're like, well, what's going on here? Uh, is this a trick question? Well, yes, it is kind of a trick question. And uh, I kind of set this up in such a manner where a lot of people might say, well, if, you know, given these two choices, the answer has to be negative 11. Well, that is a common uh, wrong way to answer a question with a negative square root or taking the square root of a negative number. So both of these are not correct. So what is the right answer? Well, the right answer is 11i. Now, if you don't know what this i business is, well, that is going to be the topic of this little video. But if this is what you put into the comment section, well, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appeared to be a certified professional expert in the area of complex and imaginary numbers. So some of you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, complex imaginary numbers, I never even heard of that. Well, uh, this will be a nice introduction. Uh, typically, uh, this topic is introduced at like the algebra one level. So if you never heard of a complex or imaginary uh, number, don't, um, you know, don't be alarmed. This is not that difficult, but let's go ahead and get into the solution. And so here is our problem. Now, again, we want to take the square root of a negative number, negative 121. Now, just to uh, really make sure you understand what the square root is, if I asked you what the square root of 9 is, well, what is the answer? Well, hopefully you said 3, right? So the square root of a number is what number times itself gets back to this number. So that number in this case would be 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. So that's just a real basic definition of the square root. But uh, here, again, the answer to uh, the square root of negative 121 is not 11 or negative 11 because the answer is not in the real number system. So we need to have a quick discussion about what real numbers and uh, what complex numbers are. But let's just take a look at this simple problem right here. So this is our actual problem, the square root of negative 121. Now we know the answer is not negative 11, but let's just take a simple uh, kind of question like the square root of a positive 121. So what is the answer to this question? And this might surprise some of you as well. All right, so uh, the square root of a positive 121 is what? Well, if we take uh, 11 and we multiply it by itself, a positive 11, 11 times 11 is 121. So if you said, well, the square root of uh, 121 or positive 121 is 11, that is correct. But uh, wait a minute here, we also have negative 11. So a negative 11 times a negative 11, remember a negative times a negative is a positive, also gets us back to a positive 121. So why is the answer uh, to the square root of positive 121 not both a positive and negative 11, right? So that's a good question. And the answer to that question is, I'm going to get a, basically I'll teach you something that's not stressed in math books, in my opinion, well enough. 
and that is when you have the square root of a number, okay, like the square root of a positive number, like the square root of 9, the answer here is 3, okay? You only have the positive version of that. You only write the positive version of it, of these uh, two options here. And uh, that is called the principal square root, okay, the principal square root. So the square root of a positive 121 is only 11, okay? It's not negative 11. So again, when you're just finding the square roots of positive numbers, you're just going to have a positive answer. But some of you might be saying, well, you missed YouTube math, man. I remember uh, something about positive and negative values. Well, there is a place for positive and negative square roots. So let me show you a simple example. So if we had an equation like x squared is equal to positive 4, uh, to solve this type of equation, this is a quadratic equation. This has two solutions. What we're going to do is take the square root of both sides because the square root of x squared is x. And now here, the square root of 4, we're not going to just think of the uh, principal square root. We're also going to throw in that positive and negative business because this uh, equation has two solutions, one of which is positive 2, the other is negative 2. So when you're taking the square root of numbers and you get those kind of positive and negative answers, typically that's when you're solving uh, things like polynomial equations, all right, but not in a simple question like this, okay? So principal square root, so a lot of people probably didn't know that, and that's, uh, you know, pretty common because, again, this is not uh, really stressed well enough, and this has big implications in other things in algebra like uh, extraneous solutions. But let's get back to our problem. Now that we know that the answer to a negative 121 is not a negative 11, well, where is the answer? What is the answer to this problem? Well, we're going to have to uh, think about another number system because the answer to the square root of negative 121 is not on our lovely real number line. So when you first start learning math way back in primary and elementary school, you start learning about numbers like how to count one, two, three. These are called the counting numbers or the naturally occurring numbers. Like, hey, I see one cat, two dogs, you know, three um, uh, horses, whatever the case is. So these are uh, the different type of numbers that we'll find in the real number system. Now that we throw in zero, we have the whole numbers here. And then if we take the positive and negative whole numbers, we have the integers. And then we have rational numbers and irrational numbers. Well, all these numbers are on this number line. This makes up the real number system. And uh, this is pretty much the number system that you know, we pretty uh, we basically only use up to a certain level of math. And again, probably like in the Algebra 1 level, when you start solving more um, interesting equations like quadratic equations, we need another number system. We need some more numbers. And so the answer to this question here is not on the real number line. So where is the answer? Well, it's part of something called the complex number system. So let's talk about this real quick. And, uh, you know, this sounds kind of scary. Oh, it's a complex number system. Well, it's not that difficult. But first of all, uh, the real number system is a subset of the complex number system. So our question here, the square root of negative 121 is in the complex number system, okay, not in the real number system, okay, but the real number system is a subset of the complex number system. Okay, so what is a complex number? Well, a complex number has this basic form right here, a plus bi, and there's two components to it. So matter of fact, let me just show you some examples of complex numbers. Maybe something like 2 plus 5i or 1 minus uh, 8i or even just 7i by itself, which would be like a 0 plus 7i or we would just basically write 7i. So there's two components to a complex number. There is the real number part. Okay, so if we look at this complex number, 2 is a real number, right? So that's on a real number line. But this i business, uh, this is the other part of a complex number. Uh, this is what we call an imaginary number. So a lot of you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're talking about uh, complex numbers, imaginary numbers. You might even be imagining that you don't even want to watch this video anymore. Well, don't do that because imaginary numbers uh, are not so imaginary. We definitely need them. So let's go ahead and define this part of a complex number. So a real number, you know, we pretty much already know what that is. It's this I business that is confusing. 
So this is not that tough. So what is I? Well, I, by definition, is equal to the square root of negative 1. So that's what I is, right? So if this is the imaginary part of a complex number or just the value of 1i. So knowing this, we can easily figure out the solution to our problem. So this is how we're going to do it. So we have the square root of neg negative 121. We're trying to figure out what the answer is. So what we're going to do is we're going to break up this negative 121 this way. We're going to think of it as a uh, positive 121 times a negative 1 because a positive times a negative is negative, right? So negative 121 is the same thing as 121 times negative 1. So we're going to take the square root of 121 times negative 1. Now, there is an interesting property of square roots where we can uh, basically break up this one big square root of these uh, factors as individual square roots. So the square root of 121 times negative 1 is equal to the square root of a positive 121 times the square root of a negative 121. And this is where, uh, you know, solving this problem is going to be very easy. Okay, so let's take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I definitely need your support because I have a goal. Now, if your goal is to learn mathematics, well, then I have two great suggestions for you. First of all, if you look in the description, you'll see links to my full main math courses. So that's really kind of a step uh, above and beyond uh, in terms of what I do on YouTube. Now, I love teaching on YouTube because it's uh, kind of a non or informal kind of non textbooky way uh, to teach math. So I like to have fun with it and I like to really break down uh, individual problems so people can see that if you have math anxiety, you can understand how to do mathematics. Uh, you may need a longer or slower explanation, but that is okay. But I love doing these videos, but I also need your support because my goal is to reach as many people as I possibly can. And the only way I'm going to do that is to get people like yourself to hit that subscribe button. That really uh, does help me out on YouTube. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. But uh, back to the things that you're gonna find in the description of this video, you'll find links to my full main math courses or at least my most popular courses. And what we're talking about here, complex numbers, I, um, they're kind of introduced in my Algebra 1 course, but if you really want to understand this stuff, check out like my Algebra 2 course and or my Pre-Calculus course. Also, you'll find links to uh, math study notes if you like to kind of like, like have uh, printable uh, resources to study algebra, geometry, or whatnot. All right, so let's go back to this solution. We're almost there. Now that we understand what i is equal to, it's the square root of negative 1. And again, we can break up the square root of negative 121 as uh, the square root of 121, positive 121, times the square root of negative 1. So this uh, property of square roots is going to be essential because we know that the square root of a positive 121, that principal square root is 11, and the square root of negative 1, by definition, is that imaginary component, i. So the correct way to write the answer is 11i. All right, so hopefully, for those of you that did guess incorrectly, first of all, never, be, never feel shy about getting a math uh, problem wrong, or never not be shy, but don't feel bad, okay, because that's part of the learning experience. So here, if I didn't know anything about uh, complex or imaginary numbers, you know, answering with negative 11, you know, that makes sense. But you can see that, uh, you know, uh, the correct answer is 11i. So maybe you never learned about complex or imaginary numbers. And hopefully this was a nice little introduction to these, uh, you know, uh, concepts. Because, you know, complex numbers, it's a, they're obviously there's a much more, uh, a lot more that I'm not covering. But hopefully you have the basic uh, sense of what a complex and imaginary number is. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.